Thank you so very much to visit with me today. Happy to do so. Um, I want to start by asking, what do you think it is about the, the folk music of the early 60s, particularly the Greenwich Village area, that we are still so fascinated with after all these years? Well, you know, there was an incredible, incredibly high concentration of intellectual energy <laughs> in mm. Greenwich Village in the, in the 1940s and 50s. Mm. The smartest, the smartest people in the world, and people who are rethinking the world, uh, and and trying to and trying to implement some of the notions of uh, liberty and equality that Emerson and Thoreau had had uh, had written about it earlier, you know, fifty or sixty years earlier, however long it was. So there was this, <coughs> there's this. Uh, there's this long thread that began really, it's, I mean, it's been going on for many centuries, but in the beginning of this country, we've de we began defining ourselves through music because there were so many countries, so many languages coming here, the idea of one out of many, mm -hmm. you know, music became the common language. So the history of that is all in the DNA of this music. And that's the, that, was the, that was the time when a, an incredible, incredibly smart group of people gathered together and, and curated this music and, yeah. and preserved it, and which, which was part of the problem when Dylan came along. And they, these people were looking backward. <coughs> they were working backward. Dylan was working backward and forward at once, you see. Yeah. So we're at a time like that now where, <coughs> where we, a lot of us have been looking backward but now we have to start. We have to start going forward, uh, and so there, there's this, this extraordinary young group of musicians actually who are doing that, led by Chris Thiele and Punch Brothers and oh, Ann yeah. Giddens. You know, musicians like this country's never seen before. We all know that Coen Brothers are amazing directors, but I think they they have a, a cinematic musicality unlike anyone else. I would agree with that. And what, what do you think that is as a, as a collaborator with them? I mean, how nice is it? You've worked with other directors, but how nice is it to work with these two who are so in tuned? Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. As as I was saying, it's like it's like working. It's like being in a group with Billy Wilder and John Ford <laughs> or something. You know, it's not like each of them is is a great director. So, <clears throat> so you have these two powerful people who aren't at odds at all. Mm. This, is, this is what's amazing about it. If you had John Ford and Billy Wilder, both each might have a different idea about how to shoot a scene. With the Coens, they arrive at that, consis that consis consensus easily and effortlessly. And, uh, and, and, also every, and also there's this deep, deep history in every shot they set up mm. because, because, of their, because of who they are. You know? They, yeah. You never see a, a shot that's just there to get from here to there. Mm -hmm. There's always a reason a shot's there. You know, it even struck me that there are several, I mean, dozens and dozens of shots that could have been a folk music cover from the 60s. That's right, yes, yeah, so many. Album covers. And that, that shot of, of Lewin Davis's father when he's looking out and listening, that's one of the most, that's as beautiful as any painting that yeah. Rembrandt ever did or Cezanne or anybody. That's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful picture.